putting on some bull runs? Oh, I'll put on a few. Yep. Yeah. Got any in November? Sure, I don't have anything. No, not the yeah. first year. Talking about PRCA needs a chasing my kids more than anything. Yes, yeah, sir. PRCA needs to help put on some events in November. Give some guys somewhere to. What did you used to do in November, getting ready? Mm. Well, when I was younger, I'd go, I'd go get on, I'd go get on some, but. Just practice bowls? Or yeah. Was there somewhere to go, like a? Like no, some, I just some go get rodeos? on. Yeah. Yeah. Like we used to like, well, like me and Lane and Jim, hell, we used to go up to HDs and then get on some bowls up there. I like try to get on good ones, you know. Ones where you had to be able to ride to stay on. Yes, sir. So you're getting on ones that, to me, practice didn't ever do you any good unless you're on one that doesn't do anything. Really not. Right. Not much practice if you don't have to. If you're not challenged, I guess. Did you, uh, did you practice much throughout the year or any other times of the year when it was slow or? No, I just always got on a lot, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Just go, going to a lot of rodeos. Yeah. You guys went to a lot of perfs throughout the year. Did. Yeah, the first 10 years I rode, I'd go to 100 to 125 a year, you know. That was probably, you know, that was before, you know, all the bull rides and everything, it started taking off. The last time I went with Sterling Crawley in the spring, he had gone to the most purse out of all the bronc riders in the PRCA, and it was something like that. Yeah. To that number, just an obscene, obscene number of purse compared to a lot of guys. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, the last time I made the NFR, I think I went to like 18 rodeos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. Well, I you, think I won like Houston and Cheyenne too. So. But literally, that's what I went to was 18. I guess, I mean, if you can make it in 18, why not? What do you think's the biggest difference in the NFR compared to your last NFR? Oh, I don't, I don't you know, to me, the NFR is just the, the coolest thing, the coolest place. It was, you know, when I was competing, and it still is now that I'm just a fan. Um, it's one constant in the world that, for me, you, you always look forward to it, you know. I look forward to it, you know, when I was, when I was riding, and, you know, I, I still look forward to it, because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great rodeo, it's a great time, and, you know, I, I don't go to a lot of rodeos throughout the year, uh, but I always look forward to going to the NFR, because it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a big deal, and, you know, but, the cool thing about, I think, what Las Vegas did for the NFR was it, you know, it became an event, you know, it's right. more than just a, a rodeo and it just has an appeal that, you know, it's kind of like the Super Bowl in that people really don't know or care if their team isn't in the Super Bowl or not, it's still. They still want to watch it. It's, it's, still, it's still a big deal. and. You know, I know people that go, you know, they talk, go to the NFR, go to the NFR, and they go out there and they, they never even go to the NFR and they might not even watch it. You right. Know, but it's, it's part of a, you know, the, Culture. the, the atmosphere of, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, I think Las Vegas has done a phenomenal job with it. The rodeo itself for me, I'm a, like, I'm, I'm a big fan of pretty much all the events and I still know enough people that, it's interesting, you know. It's interesting to me to to watch, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the events, and uh, it's just fun. What rodeo during the year comes close to that feeling for you? Um, well, I mean, all the all the you know the bigger ones, you know, you know Houston, Calgary, Pendleton, you know, the, the same old traditional. When you think about rodeo, those are the rodeos that. To, to me, that's that's what you think about. Those were the rodeos that I was, when I was a little kid growing up, you know, thinking about, couldn't wait to to go 
to the cow palace, just things that you heard about or read about back then with no social media and no very little, you know, coverage. You know, all you had was the Pro Rodeo Sports News, so that was kind of the the Bible. So, you know, I, I would know when the Rodeo Sports News would get to my house, and I'd read it from cover to cover, and so just getting to go to the places that you've, you've heard of. And, uh, so if there's a, if there's a article in there about Kissimmee, then now all of a sudden, like that's in your mind and you're ready to get down there. But like, you, you're not watching videos on it on the internet, obviously. So yeah, I could see how that, the sports news would light something up for you. Oh yeah, because that's, that, that, that's all you had. Right. That in your imagination. <laughs> yeah. So it was, uh, you know, like, you bring up Kissimmee, I, I probably won it, I don't know, three, four, five times. You know, you know when they, they had one in, you know, in the winter and in, in the summer. And I always loved to go to Florida. And even back then, they always had, their bulls were always wild and pretty, pretty swampy. And you know, they always, they always had buckers when a lot of, a lot of parts of the country or contractors didn't, didn't have the depth or a lot of great bucking bulls, but Florida never had a shortage of, of bucking bulls. Yes, sir. It, they're, you know, the, the cattle industry in, in Florida is, is huge, and most people don't realize you know, how huge it really is. Do you uh, go to Canada a lot? We used to go, you know, at least, you know, four or five, you know, maybe up to seven or eight, ten times a year. Yes, sir. I love going to Canada. I like the people. Calgary was super fun. Uh, one thing about Canada, it always felt like you were just like going back in time, like about ten years, you know. And you know, it's, I, think, I think they still have the like the rotary telephone and stuff <laughs> like that. But I, I had a lot of really good friends in Canada, and uh, Calgary is always super fun to go to. But I enjoyed going to, you know. BC and you know there were a lot of there were a lot of good rodeos up there. And that was back then when I used to, when I first started, you know I I used to enter the bronc riding a lot. And the cool thing about Canada, you know, every time you enter the bronc riding up there, you always big, strong, just real bucking horses. You know they they're they're, they're legit. So yeah. that that was always fun. Yeah. But the one thing I didn't like about it, I just wasn't good enough to win quite as much as I would have liked to. But I love riding Bronx, especially in Canada. Um, watching guys, bull riders in 2022, what, um, what's kind of a, some different challenges that they're having to face that you didn't? You know, I don't, I don't know that there's a whole lot of difference, you know. The, the one thing about bull riding is it's pretty simple, it's pretty constant. You know, make, the, make the whistle, ride for eight seconds, and the high score wins. Um, and for, for me, you know, growing up, uh, wanting to do that, wanting to be that, and luckily I had no idea how and why, ended up realizing that dream and of going to the national finals and winning some championships. But I always loved bull riding is because it's black and white, no gray area. Yes, sir. You make the whistle, you don't. Didn't matter, you know, what your name was, where you're from, you know, who your parents were, whatever. It, you, know, you couldn't talk your way through bull riding. You got to get on, you know, and make the whistle is, is all up to you. and. You know, when you did well, it was your fault. And when you sucked, it was your fault. And I always liked that having my fate in my own hands rather than being dependent on someone or, you know, or someone's, you know, you know determining whether you're successful or not. Yes, sir. Um. I think the I think the cool thing about bull right now is that the the bulls are so impressive and so phenomenal that you know back when we were 
competing, you know, you know, like it was me and Jim, Clint, Wayne, whoever, if one of us one wasn't being competitive or winning is 90% of the times you're getting on a bull that just was simply no good. And you don't, you don't have, you don't have that now. I mean, pretty much every time you get to the bull riding or the rodeo that you're going to get on something that, that you can be competitive on. You might not like it, the style, you know, that he goes this direction or he kicks in this way or he does this or that. But for the most part, if you make the whistle, you're, you're going to win something. And a lot of times, you know, when we weren't winning, uh, just because you're getting on bulls that are no good, bulls bulls are half the score, and so the the caliber and the quality of the the bulls now are just you know not even close to what they were then. And, and even in saying that, you know, the bull of the year in 1984 was probably 018 Cowtown. Well, he's every bit of a badass as the world champion bull this year. Yes, sir. But now they're all of the caliber of, you know, world champion contenders when, you know, they just didn't have the depth right? Uh, the, when, the, whenever, whenever we were competing. I'd, I'd like to be one of those guys say, oh, yeah, how much harder we had it and how much better we were than these guys are. And, we try it harder, and these guys don't. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's nonsense. But you know, the the video doesn't lie. I mean, the bulls that we were getting on day in and day out weren't the bulls that these guys get on day in and day out. But I feel like with your attitude and ability, like you're still competitive in this year. If you were a bull rider, oh, I, 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 I would feel probably, I would, I would feel more confident now than I did then because. I was always better on bulls that, that bucked hard. If, yes, sir. You know, if they didn't kick much and they didn't have a lot of action, then you know, I I, I didn't ride very well. You know, I didn't. Uh, the harder they bucked, the more they were up and down. The, the better the better I was. So I I felt like I I could probably be more competitive now than I was then. But just because you know, usually ride to me. I was always, you know, the better they were, the better I was. Do you, when you do your own bull ridings now, do you try to focus on anything in particular when you're putting together bulls, or do you just let the guys bring? No, 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 no. I, I'm very particular about what what they bring and what they don't bring. It's it's a it's a very simple, you know, what I what I like to get on him. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> and and if I don't. If I wouldn't like to get on him, not be, just because of a certain pattern or this or that, you know, if if I drew him and I rode him, was I going to be competitive? You know, was I going to win something? So yeah, I'm I'm very very picky about you know the bulls that, that we bring. And the good thing is there's so many out there that you know guys that you've never heard of, you know, might have a dozen bulls and. Every one of them are NFR caliber, and that's you know it's it's an opinion, it's subjective, but you know like you know they take a hundred bulls to the NFR. Well, there's probably you know, 500 bulls that are good enough to be at the NFR. So it's it's a it's a it's a pretty big challenge, you know, to pick what they say the 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 best hundred. Yes, sir. Um, and it's and it's subjective, so it's right. You know, what I think is good, you might not think is quite quite as good. But to me, as if you stay on, are you going to be 88 to over 90? That's pretty pretty much the rule of thumb, right? You know? uh, but if they're buck really really hard, you know, and, and a lot of a lot of bulls that you know they'll they'll mark them, judge will mark them really high when they ride them two, three, four seconds, but when you look and when they ride them eight seconds, they go from being a 20, 23 to a 19 because they might weaken or they might cut out. Or uh, I like to know what, what's what's the end score going to be, you know? And not bulls that can just get somebody on the ground, what 
you know, people call them eliminators or this, that, or the other. I mean, they're all eliminators <laughs> in, in, in some way, but uh, to me, you want to get the ones that when you ride, you're going to be 90 and win. Who's going right now that you kind of see a little bit of yourself in? Oh, or, or, any, or any young bull rider that? Well, I mean, you know, Sage has been a guy that, I didn't know I just hit Sage. You know, Sage, to me, does everything correct, you know, riding. You know, he just, he's what I would say, and I've said that ever since he started, he, he just reminded me of Jim Sharp in that fundamentally he just does everything right. He makes it look easy, and he's not going to get bucked off hardly ever because he's always in the right 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 position he's always in and what's so impressive is you know again he's getting on buckers every time he shows up uh jim sharp he was the same way didn't it didn't matter what they did he he was always in the right spot and he was a guy that wasn't in position one jump and then out of position the next jump that those guys are they're either right in the middle or they're on the ground yeah and they're on the ground only about 10% of the time. I mean, they're just, they do everything fundamentally correct. Uh, but, you know, now that, you know, you know every, every year, you know, up until, you know, I guess the NFR here in, in Arlington, you know, he'd never lost the world championships since he was a rookie. And so, you know, when he didn't win, when he didn't win the world that year, you know, and then he came back and, and he won it again. But, but every year, you know, I, I know from my own experience, every year it's gonna be it's it's gonna be harder to do than than the year before. Right. Just because that's just that's life. You know, as you get older, you know, your you know your body isn't as you know there's you know there's one Tom Brady. You know there's there's some guys that can still do things. Competitively, right. you know, when they're the older they get, but it's a, it's a pretty short list. And it's not just you know your athletic ability, it's or or, or even des desire is that your life changes. Yes, yeah, sure. the, the, the more the more the more he wins, the more opportunities that he has. You know, whether it's business or or personal, then you know when you first start and you're a rookie and you know you're not married and you, you're married to one thing and that's riding bulls and making the whistle all day every day and so as you your career takes off every year with every championship you're just you know it's not you know yeah. on you know the top of your mind all day every day like it like it once was and yeah so sage is married just, and has a kid now you know, it's a it, it's a different He's different now, whether he, you know whether he likes or he doesn't like it. You know, conditions, circumstances change, uh, but that doesn't mean he can or won't break down his record. Because I, I think he will. But right. Yes. Sir. I, th I think he, even he would probably tell you that it's probably been harder the last few years than it was the first few years. Cause yes. Sir. The first few years, you know, everything was. Seem like it was effortless, and you're, you're younger and you're healthier, and you know that's. I, th I think you tend to be more focused, but the more the more you win, the older you get, the more distractions there are. Um, rodeo in these days, you hear guys talk about what it was like rodeoing um, back in the day and they talk about just all the fights. Were there that, that really that many more fights? I don't recall having that, that many more, more fights. Um, you know, you know I, I used to always hear kind of similar, you know, to the you know, generation before me and even the generation b b before that, you know. A lot of times, you know, people's uh, memories, you know, they, they, they tend to remember things that that I never saw. You know, <laughs> there, was a, there was a story, Mike Bandy was an NFR bull rider and him and a buddy of his, they, they were at the Cow Palace and they had a big time and uh, 
uh, they t took off and he, he was lost. He couldn't find where they were going to, to, to go back to where they were staying. And it was him and a guy and a couple of girls. He couldn't wake them up. So he just drove down on the, on the, on the beach there in San Francisco and just drove out into the ocean. Water starts coming in the car. And he said that's the only way he thought he could wake them up. <laughs> and so he said, but now every time he sees somebody, you know, from back in the day, they all like, remember when we were in that car? He said, well, if as many people were in that car, <laughs> claimed to be in that car now, he said, I'd had to been driving a Greyhound. So a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people don't let the facts get in the way of a, 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 of a, a good a story. Good story. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah. That, was, that was one of my favorite ones. But. You know, I heard somebody say hindsight's not always twenty twenty. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh the older we get the better we was kind of thing. In my opinion, if I had to choose an event of a person that I would want to fight the least, it would be bareback riders. Is that true for you? Or would well, it be bareback more? riders they, they every time they nod it's a fight. It, you know, cause it's yeah. you know, it's so physical and it's so I mean I was the worst bareback rider ever. I qualified for the national high school finals when I went to Yakima, Washington, got on on a, a flying fives, big feather footed monster. And I'm like, it's just a beating. Plus I was terrible at it. But <laughs> you know, when you ride bulls, you ride Bronx, the actual riding, you know, you're not getting beat up. It's not that physical. If you make a good ride, get off, you know, not m much more physical than going to the 7-Eleven and getting something to drink. But bareback riding from the, the first jump, it's just a pounding and, yeah, no thank you. I <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I told, I was talking to Casey Fields and Tilden Hooper, and I got on a couple of bareback horses, and I got on Medicine Woman and Cool Water within and cool water's about like medicine woman it was before she was a bronc and they said well you can we will allow you to call yourself a bareback rider just for getting on them but those two pretty much retired me from the bareback riding i tried it a little bit but yeah if just, i'm going to try somebody on i'm going to go down maybe find it find it find a team roper you know <laughs> maybe a, maybe one of them semi overweight calf ropers right you know? <laughs> yeah yeah, not a steer wrestler. Yeah, no, 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 no. Definitely not a bareback rider. And then nobody from Louisiana, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> and nobody from Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the guys you don't mess with. So, so it sounds like you might have some actual fighting stories that involve. Well, I've seen, I've seen some. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I've got a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take note of him and yes. steer clear. Yes. Uh, JB made a post the other day on social media. I don't know if you saw it, but essentially it ended with bull, some bull riders today need to drink a cup of concrete. And it sounded like it would have been something from a conversation with you and him. Yeah, J JB's, uh, he's, a, he's kind of, he's a, he's a one of a kind guy. He was, uh, you know, I, I, I was fortunate enough, you know, when he first started, you know, he, he came to a couple he came to some of my bull rides and won, and you know, I knew right then I was a JB fan. But over the years, you just get to be more of a JB fan because of, you know, he uh, he was he, he's all in every time, every day, no excuses, and don't ask if you don't want to know. Yes. Yes. And uh, you know, I would always I would liken my riding more to JB than I would any of the rest of the guys because wasn't that he's, you know, you know, more athletic or, you know, does everything, you know, he's not a sage where he just does what looks like a robot, that everything goes according to plan every jump because, you know, it's not, you know, it's, he might be upside down in his hand one jump and back in the middle of the next jump. He just a, he's an, an all guts, very determined, find a way to make the whistle regardless of the circumstances or the bull. And so that's why I always admired him because, you know, 
he make the whistle a lot of times when he shouldn't have, you know, based on the position that he was in, but he's just a, you know, all in every time he nodded kind of guy. Yeah. And, and the batter they were, the batter that you know, he would always raise, raise his level of effort and energy to regardless of what, it, what he was getting on. Always, always impressed me with just the effort and the desire because I think that's the most important part. I had a video on my phone, two videos, one of asking Jim Sharp, who do in between you and JB? And Jim Sharp said, me. And then I asked JB, who do in between you and Jim Sharp? And JB said, me. <laughs> it was back to back. I feel like those two probably would have had a good time going down the road. Yes. And, uh, well, if they would, they'd probably have to have somebody, a navigator and a driver to get them there because <laughs> they might not be able to get get there by themselves. <laughs> I just uh, always ask Jim, I'd always ask Jim, like, you know, do you want to enter here? Do you want to enter here? Regardless of question that I'd ask him, I, I know the answer is, oh, whatever you want to do is fine with me. I'll let you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just wanted somebody to enter and get him to the rodeo. And yeah. Once he got there, he was going to be fine. Make right. the whistle, go get his check. Yeah. And where, do, where do we go next? Yeah. If there was going to be one of the four of y'all that was going to get in a scuffle after the rodeo, who was going to be most likely to do it? Um, well, it wouldn't be Jim, for sure. Because yeah. Jim can get along with a rattlesnake or, you know, a serial killer. It doesn't matter. Jim can get along with anybody. He, he's just easy going, whatever you want to say or do fine with him he, he just literally didn't care so if Jim ever did get in a fight it was because there were circumstances like he might have had one one too many right Bud Lights but you know his nature is like you couldn't melt and pour him in a fight 90% of the time he'd say you know you're this that and the other and you can't insult him you can't offend him they're like Okay, whatever you think. Yeah. You know, he, he just didn't care. But um, it would probably be me, I guess. <laughs> just because I'm not, I, I, I never was good at just turning, turning my cheek and walking off, walking yeah, away. Sure. Was, what was Lane like? Lane, yeah. well, he just, nobody ever wanted to fight him. They just wanted to hug him and tell him how great he was. <laughs> you know, like, how, how pretty he was and cool he was. and. Will you be my friend? And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah. He, yeah. He's just, yeah. I, well, he's I, one of those guys that no matter what, you know, he could say the same thing as, as I would say. And they just, oh, yeah, I agree. And, you, I agree. and if I said that same thing, they, they, they'd want to throw down the fire. Yeah. What? You said what? <laughs> so I, uh, he's the, just a, yeah, he was one of them. Just, just a good guy. He just, very, very likable, very, you know, and he was genuine. Uh -huh. That's, yeah, you can't, you can't make that up. But all you guys were just obviously competitive. We were very competitive and, and we had fun. We just, you know, we always, you know, we had a rule like if you, get, if you got bucked off at three in a row, then you, you had to go home. You couldn't, we couldn't be seen with you in public if you got <laughs> bucked off in three in a row. And, uh, very seldom did that ever happen. I think it happened to all of us once or twice, but we, we got a pass or a reprieve, but we were all competitive. But the cool thing is like, if one of us, you know, if I didn't win and they did, I'd, we all wanted to win, but we were just as happy and good when somebody else did. And, uh, you know, I'm like, whenever we, like from, like 85 to like 90, 91, 86 to 91. Every year, one of us, one of us won it. So we always felt like, if, you know, if I didn't win it, one of them would. And we were naturally you'd rather win. But if one of us won it, we're, we're all good. More of a team. Yeah, and it, was, and it and it was fun. It was we just we we really did have fun. Yeah. Um. Are you still mad at me for beating you in San Angelo? No, I, 
me mad? No. Yeah, you got over it. No. Okay. I'm, I'm all over it. <laughs> There's a couple questions in here that uh, I was going to ask, and what it is is like, we'll put it next to everyone else's responses. So they're not really silly, but they're just kind of, they're just kind of random questions. Uh, your game of choice in Vegas, blackjack, slots. Blackjack. Blackjack. You, do you feel like you've broke even in Vegas over the years, or have or you got? Oh, from, I, well, of course not. Yeah. Nobody breaks even in Vegas if they've been there enough times. Yeah. It, it took me a long time. I'm a slow learner, but I used to. I was convinced that I could. That I could. Beat that, I, that I could. That I could, and I did occasionally. I remember I, I turned fifty dollars into. Fifty thousand, once or twice, but I turned fifty thousand into nothing more times <laughs> than not. So. And the problem is, when when we go to Vegas, it's not for two days; it's for fourteen. That's just too long for a cowboy to be there with a little bit of money in his pocket. We used to, yeah. I used to be convinced that this was going to be my year. I was going to just <laughs> really, really clean house, but. Uh, Thank, 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 thank goodness for Mr. Gon that uh, finally you know, he told me one day, he said, you know what, I don't want your money. I got a lot of money, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> Why don't you keep it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, the, the best thing that Mr. Gon ever did for me, he said, like, I'm not going to give you markers because I don't want your money. I've got plenty of money. He said, but you come, stay as long as you want always at my hotel. I'll put you up and feed you, but trust me, I don't need your money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is South Point your place, to, place favorite place to gamble? Um, it's my favorite place to go just because of <clears throat> the things that Mr. Gone has done for me over the years. Yes, yeah, sir. He, you know, I had a couple pretty significant injuries in Vegas and both times I was in the hospital, he'd always come He'd always come to my hotel before he went to work and after he got off work to see how I was doing. One time when I had neck surgery, another time when I had the facial reconstruction after I proved that uh, Bodacious head was harder than mine because mine broke and his didn't. Right. But, uh, and every time after it was time to go home, Michigan picked me up in his limo him driving drove me to the airport put me on his private jet and flew me home and just the things that he's done for me personally is uh, he's a he's a very kind generous man so i really don't think of ever staying anywhere other than than his place i like to go you know i've been in and around every place in vegas you know back going back to the you know, the Binions, the Horseshoe Days, or the, the mid-80s to, you know, all of them, all the new up-and-coming cool places. And I love going to Vegas, love going, doing different things, but, uh, you know, I always end up at home in, in South Point because that feels like it's home every time we're there because yeah, that's, sure. that's how they treat us. Uh, you blow a tire on the way to the first performance of the NFR, who are you going to call? Uh, Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They'll be there. <laughs> worst co-pilot of 2022, or worst co-pilot you've had? <laughs> Jim Sharp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no question. <laughs> Best co-pilot you've had? Best co-pilot, me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> The NFR has a halftime show concert, and you get to decide who plays. Matchbox 20. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball. Uh, you win a gold buckle. Rodeo Genie pops out, gives you three wishes. You've already used two. What's your third? Um, I get a, I get use of a Gulf Stream for the next fifty years. Okay, that's a pretty good one. That's unique. Hollywood is going to make a movie about your life. Who plays you? 
Um, you know, let's see. Dale Brisby. Okay. <laughs> Favorite scene from Lonesome Dove? Uh, I don't like rude behavior in a man. I won't mm. tolerate it. That's a good one. And one that I, it doesn't surprise me. Favorite Dale Brisby video? All. All of them. <laughs> That's better than I've never watched them. <laughs> Um, what's a somebody, somebody actually has said they've never watched them? No. That's, <laughs> yeah, nobody. Of course not. Right. Are you serious, Clark? Yeah. <laughs> what's, a, what's a show people would be surprised to hear that you binge watch? Uh, Air Disasters. Okay, yep. Surprised. <laughs> uh, Pre-rodeo pump-up song. <clears throat> um... The road goes on forever and the party never ends. Best rodeo hospitality tent. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Sykes in Missouri. Mm, yes. Most memorable rodeo for you. Um, The NFR, but uh, went to North Washington, Pennsylvania one time. Pretty cool. One perf that you'd like to forget? Uh, 10th round, 1985. Biggest choke job in the history of the NFR. I believe the biggest lead ever. I'm sure, I mean, how did it motivate you moving forward? Well, it was the best thing ever happened to me because I'd, I'd led all year for, you know, for 11 and a half months and uh, didn't think there was, I, I was pretty sure that I had it won and I didn't. I just choked. <laughs> I'd like to have a really good excuse, but I just sucked. And which, made me made me realize and understand that you know it's not over till it's over and you know, it's kind of all these sports cliches but yeah you gotta you, you gotta finish favorite rodeo movie uh jw coop <laughs> <laughs> and that's all for today appreciate it that's tough I always good to see you, man. Yes, sir. Likewise.